I was watching some TikTok compilations this morning. Bad idea. Cost of living TikTok compilations on YouTube are incredibly depressing. Um, and I know that the cost of living crisis is a real thing. I know that there are lots of people in really dire situations. Um, but I think that compiling multiple people crying into their cameras about how awful their lives are is not helpful and I really have to stop watching them. There was one person who I watched who was talking about how, you know, literally every penny she earns just goes straight out in bills. And I don't know the backstory. Some of these people who, you know, claim they're doing everything they can to keep roofs over their heads and things are still spending on credit cards and, you know, buying stuff they don't need, whatever. Anyway, that wasn't the point of what I was going to say. She was talking about how she knew that despite the situation, she was incredibly lucky because she knew that she had family that would help her if she needed the help. And I'm in a similar situation. Am I in a similar situation? I'm not. I'm not crying into my phone at all. I have cut back everything. I manage my money down to the last penny. I don't feel deprived because right now I have a roof over my head. Lots of people don't. I can buy enough food, not too much. I do it by only buying discounts. Um, I actually quite enjoy that as a challenge. It's a weird kind of way of foraging <laughs> so I go into the supermarket on key mornings or evenings during the week and I just buy what I can get on discount and I only buy what I need I don't buy luxuries yes I do buy some crap food which I shouldn't buy like occasionally I'll see a pack of donuts or something but it'll be donuts that have been discounted from a pack of five from one pound to 25p something like that I won't buy anything full price because it's expensive and even though I only buy on yellow stickers my food costs have gone up this year because yellow stickers are only a percentage of the full price so if the full price goes up the yellow sticker also goes up so there are lots of yellow sticker foods which I no longer buy I don't buy um, mints like beef pork mints too expensive in any form now I don't buy chicken too expensive most of the time occasionally you'll see a good discount but a lot of the yellow sticker discounts just really aren't worth it um, and I, I, I buy other meat that's cheaper I'm not starving to death by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so my income is small, but my outgoings are smaller. Therefore, I have a little bit of extra money in the bank, which I don't blow. Um, I put it into savings. Yes, I do occasionally buy things that I don't need. I know that. But that's because I save really hard elsewhere, which means if I want to make those purchases, which are considered purchases, like I've bought that walking pad, it's cost me £184.99. But I thought long and hard about that. I shopped around. I made sure I bought the one that I thought was going to be perfect for me. And so far, it's going really well. It's going to be a huge asset to my health, which is priceless. Um, it's helping me stay very focused and moving around and that is good for my emotional and mental well-being. So I am not, I don't have any debt at all because I'm careful with my money. Um, I know how to utilise credit cards without getting into debt. Um, I take out as many savings accounts as I can. So... The savings that I do have, it's not vast by any stretch of the imagination, but I put it into savings accounts so that whilst it is sitting around, not sitting around, no money is actually sitting around, it's working, it's earning me interest. I put it away in various places, I earn interest, but I always make sure that I'm keeping a balance in the bank so that if emergencies happen, I'm covered. So my emergency fund, I have a six month emergency fund for paying basic bill if all income stopped completely, like I was ill or something and nothing was coming in. 
and I'm covered for six months um, and I've put that into relatively easy access savings accounts so that it's also working so it's adding because of inflation and the cost uh, things are still going up so I need that money to increase because six months of emergency savings now isn't going to be the same as six months of emergency savings in six months or a year that's it's going to need to be more because things are still going up my rent goes up every year food prices go up energy bills are going up the price of fuel goes up so everything has to be covered so I think ahead like that as well but and again I've gone right off tangent again I do have family that if something happened would support me so I'm not so terrified about my situation that if something happened, for instance, and I lost this flat, I would not be living in my tiny three-door hatchback. I would have family to go to. Yes, it would be a huge upheaval. I would have to get rid of a lot of stuff. I don't know if I could run my business successfully because I've got a whole room next door that would have to go into storage. And I live far from my family, so there is the geographical nature of that. I could cope, I've done it before, that's not a problem, but it would be a bit of a pain in the backside. But I know I will not end up on the street. I know I will not end up spending eight years on a council waiting list. So it's not as terrifying, but that does not mean that I go, oh well, it doesn't matter, my parents will dig me out. I am 50 years old, I have never asked my parents for money. I have worked for, um, nearly all my working life. I think there was about six months when I wasn't working. I've been, I spent 17 years in PAYE jobs. I've been self-employed for 12 years. I have always paid into my um, national insurance. So I have, um, as far as I can at the moment, I am up to date with all of my national insurance payments. I haven't paid any tax on my self-employment because I've never earned enough. And that's a difference between what you earn and what you can claim as in, in expenses. So there are years when I have earned more than the personal allowance, but because of expenses like you can claim travel, you can claim business expenses, all sorts of things, that brings me down under. And that is why I haven't paid tax in 12 years. But I've always paid my national insurance. Um, the only time I have claimed, I mean, I've been on working tax credits since... 2017 and then I got migrated uh, just over a year ago to Universal Credit and I got the protected year so I had that and I took that because they offered it to me if they didn't want me to have it they shouldn't have offered it I took it it's been very useful to me and so those that is the extent of that um, but yeah I've never asked for money for my family to bail me out. I've always got myself out of my own debt. I've got myself out of my own, any financial issues with either my own debt or partners digging me into debt because they were bad with money. I've dealt with all those things. So there's slightly less pressure. I feel slightly less precarious than some people because I know that if, it really turned bad for me. I will not be sleeping in a cardboard box anywhere. And that makes an enormous difference. So I do have all my emergency funds set up so that I have access to money if something should happen. But of course, there are always, you know, you never know what's around the corner. And the last four years have shown that it's been an absolute nightmare for a lot of people. You know, your, your good job suddenly disappeared out from under you with COVID. Um, suddenly your landlord sold up because of COVID. It's been absolutely horrific. So situations that people never imagined they would be in, like their rent going up three times the price in one renewal. I think it's been incredibly hard for people that haven't been able to cope, that haven't been able to survive financially without practically bankrupting themselves and for those people who have been able to move back home with parents 
or family. Yes, it feels like a step back, but at least you're not on the street. At least you're not sleeping in your car. And that's what family's for. You know, you're there to support each other. If something happens, you can help each other. And I know that my parents have had to help my brother out. He's married, three small children. They've had all sorts of medical issues with the kids when they were young. They've needed help. They're both in work, um, but my brother's job has been precarious on and off since COVID and still isn't really resolved. My sister-in-law works as an A&E nurse. That's been really hard because they get treated badly. Uh, she can't work full time because they have three small children. I say not, not quite so small now. The third one has just started school. So there are now chunks of hours where she can pick up extra shifts. But it's not predictable. My parents have had to muck in and help look after the children. Um, but they're there for that. If my parents had been not there and not able to do all those things, I think my brother's situation would have been incredibly bad. They've... You know, they're incredibly lucky that we're all incredibly lucky that my parents um, worked incredibly hard all their lives, incredibly careful with money, safeguarded themselves for retirement so that at least me and my brother will never have to worry about having to financially support our parents as they've got older. That won't happen. And that protects us, you know, my parents have done that in part to ensure that we will, that they will never feel like a financial burden on us. They've put money aside if they need care, if they need adaptations to the house. They've been incredibly careful and my dad, I'm a lot like my dad, my dad sits for hours in the evening poring over spreadsheets, checking figures, making sure that everything's invested properly and that's where I get it from, I think. My dad's really careful. And it's just in me, I think it's a genetic thing, you know, I come from a background of people who have not been in debt. Um, if you look back far enough from my history, there are lots of women business owners, you know, shopkeepers and things like that, but they were business owners in their own right, going right back. And I think that reflects genetically in me over the years. And because I've understood that my family are like that, I think it's helped me kind of follow follow the lead so to speak and I think that's also been really useful because it's given me a good grounding for being the person that I am now and the person that I was always supposed to be even though I messed up a lot um, got myself into situations had terrible partners who were bad with money and were awful people but I survived it I learnt the lessons I got out and now I'm here and I'm in the best place that I've ever been in my entire life since I left home this is the best situation I've ever been in and I'm not earning huge amounts of money but I don't care about that I earn enough to pay for everything keep myself out of debt and have a little bit left to put into savings yeah my retirement fund looks pretty naff but I've already done some projections on that and I've worked out how I will manage and we will manage to what it is. But knowing that there is that backup if things really turn bad is incredibly important. Um, don't take advantage of it, but remember that it is there if you need it. And I know lots of people don't and that makes their situation very precarious. Anyway, that's my thoughts for the day. I just thought I'd say that there's a lot of rambling -y type things going on at the moment where I'm just having random thoughts based on things that I've heard or read or seen. And I like to reflect on stuff like that, you know. It's what it is. That's the way my brain works. That's it. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.